Which countries continue to oppose the vaccine patent waiver at the World Trade Organization? According to a report, the United Kingdom, European Union, Australia, South Korea and Japan have raised doubts over a proposed intellectual property waiver on COVID-related products, including vaccines. The resistance came as a proposal to initiate text-based discussions on an IP waiver gained traction at a WTO meeting. Earlier, the U.S. had said that it was ready to discuss vaccine waivers after India and South Africa came forward with the original idea in October. They have now submitted an updated proposal. China has backed the move as well. Agreements at the WTO require the consensus backing of all 164 member states. So far, 63 members support granting of vaccine waivers. The revised proposal says that the waiver should apply not only to vaccines but to treatments, diagnostics, medical devices and protective equipment as well, along with the material and components needed to produce them. It also said that the waivers should last for at least three years. The World Trade Organization is divided over the importance of vaccine patents. Rich nations say that waivers will not increase vaccine supply and that the focus should instead be on increasing the production of the jabs. This comes as the World Health Organization raises concerns on vaccine inequality. According to a recent estimate, only 1% of the total vaccines injected around the world have so far been administered in Africa, which is now becoming a huge cause of concern. For more on this story, we have Stuart Smith joining us live from Brussels. Stuart, thanks so much for joining us on Vion. Tell us the latest about the debate surrounding vaccine patent waivers. India and South Africa, of course, have been lobbying to get these patents waived, while the EU, UK and Australia now continue to oppose this. Why is this? Yes, and those are some very important members, but consider that only 63 countries of 164 are actually on board with this. The far majority, the vast majority of global uh, of states, part of the World Trade Organization, do not want this. And the reasons are many. Uh, at its most basic, you'll hear the line from the European Union, for example, which is that such a waiver just isn't necessary. It wouldn't help speed up the, uh, the rollout of vaccines around the world, and it also would potentially damage damage the pharmaceutical industry. That's a claim to uh, potentially saying that intellectual property would undermine confidence for any future drugs or any drugs which have to be made or adjusted to fight new COVID-19 variants. But also the claim that comes from the European Commission consistently is that IP waivers take a long time to sort out. As we've seen, this has taken since October already and very little progress has been made. They take a long time to arrange and that the European Commission says in the meantime what should happen, what should happen earlier urgently is states such as the UK and the United States instead allow the vaccines that they are producing on their soil to be exported immediately because the UK, although it has no official, uh, official export ban, is not exporting its vaccines and the US has an official ban and is not exporting its vaccines. So the European Commission is saying that should be where the debate is focused on, getting states like that to open up uh, and export their vaccine doses. But even amongst people that agree this should happen, like the United States, uh, which which gave a, bo a boost to this proposal earlier in the year. They disagree on certain other factors, uh, such as, for example, how long any waiver should last, whether it be one, two, or even three years. Three years is the latest proposal from South Africa, but also whether it should just be about vaccines or medical equipment in general, whether it should also be treatments, whether it should be personal protective equipment. A lot to be debated here. And as we saw on Monday, there's still very little sign of any breakthrough. Right. Now, Stuart, at this point, how likely is it that these patents will be waived? And this is, of course, at a time when richer countries are being criticized or accused for hoarding vaccine supplies while the developing world needs them the most. Yes, yeah, so this meeting on Monday was an informal meeting ahead of a formal meeting where this issue will be discussed around the second week of June. That also comes at the same time that the European Parliament is due to vote on whether the European Union should support such an idea. At its uh, latest meeting, the European Parliament was divided itself on the matter. So that could change, potentially, if the European Parliament gives its uh, assent to the idea of vaccine waivers. The European Commission would then feel more pressure to also uh, to vote for vaccine waivers at the World Trade Organization. 
but it doesn't seem like much change is happening. We're talking about these text-based uh, negotiations. That's still very early stages, and not even that can be agreed on at the moment. That would involve discussions around a particular text, which India and South Africa keep updating to try and accommodate some of the concerns. But clearly, over 100 countries are still not convinced, uh, convinced even with these latest, uh, latest changes, to put a timeline on any waiver, and also a limiting exactly what should and shouldn't be included with the IP waiver. Right, Stuart, thank you so much for all your insights and thank you for joining us. Beyond World is One is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news updates on the move.